All right, hello everyone. Um, I wanted to make this video about my experience with Hodgkin lymphoma um, because I got a number of questions from friends after I shared on Instagram that I had gone through this. Um, so I thought folks might be interested in sort of hearing a little bit more about uh, what I've gone through in, in some more detail. Um, and also just sort of for my own, um, I guess, mental processing of this, I think it would be helpful. Um, and then also, um, if anyone's watching this who's going through something similar, um, I hope this can answer some of the questions I'm sure you have and uh, sort of reassure you in some way. Um, so anyway, um, all of this started uh, in February last year, um, uh, so 2021. Um, I started getting this terrible, terrible pain in um, sort of my like low back and and hips and and also sort of my upper back and and sort of shoulder um and i mean i i can't even describe how bad it was it was like it would completely knock me out like i'd, I'd just be lying in bed like completely debilitated just trying to get through it um these sort of episodes would last um about 45 minutes to an hour sometimes they they could go on as long as two hours and that was terrible you know, not fun. Um, so, and this was happening about, I don't know, one, once a week for a couple of weeks maybe, and then it, it really started picking up. It was like every day, um, sort of in the evening time, I knew to expect um, this really awful pain would come on, and there was, you know, not much I could do about it. I'd, I'd try to take, like, ibuprofen or something, um, but that didn't seem to help a whole lot. Um so I went and saw, um, there's a, like a clinic at my university. Um, so I went there, um, the doctor I saw referred me to a sports medicine doctor. Um, and he was sort of convinced that it was because I was lifting weights. Um, and I, I really disagreed with that. I, I, um, you know, I've been lifting weights for a long time. Um, I know what sort of aches and pains feel like. I know what actual injuries feel like. Um, this, was not that. I, I really was, was sort of convinced that this had nothing to do with um, lifting weights, uh, but he felt otherwise. He, he really thought it was. Um, so he, he did order um, uh, an x-ray, an MRI of my pelvis, um, and then also a bone scan. Um, the um, x-ray and MRI came back just completely normal, um, but the bone scan indicated um, uh, it said, I think, signs of overuse or malignancy. Um, and we all sort of discounted the malignancy thing. Um, the, this doctor even specifically told me uh, this is, you know, not cancer. This is, I think uh, this is not uh, oncologic is, is the word he said, um, or the way he put it. Um, so we really just sort of went back and forth on this. You know, he wanted me to stop lifting weights and just see what happens. Uh, and I was sort of like, no, I, I don't think this is, this is the problem. Um, so that, that went on for, um, I think a few months about until May. Um, and I, I really started getting frustrated, um, cause we, you know, I was still having this awful pain sort of every day. Um, and we didn't know what was going on. So, um, I went back to, uh, the clinic at my university, saw the doctor again, and she referred me to, uh, rheumatology at uh, Mass General. Um, the reason I, I went to rheumatology is one of the things we were sort of thinking of was maybe this is um, ankylosing spondylitis, um, which is a completely different disease. Um, uh, so the rheumatologist who I saw was amazing. I, I, like everything I was frustrated with, this other guy, um, she, you know, listened to me. She appreciated that this probably wasn't uh, related to lifting weights. Um, and was really just sort of like, okay, we're going to get to the bottom of this. Um, so she ordered another MRI, um, and a whole bunch of blood work, um, and everything came back normal. The MRI looked normal, the, um, blood work looked normal, except for, uh, what's called a SED rate, um, which is just a, a very, uh, nonspecific indicator of inflammation. Um, so it really doesn't tell you a whole lot, um. Uh, but mine was just very slightly elevated. Um, so aside from that, nothing really out of the ordinary. Um, so we're, you know, for 
few more months kind of like, okay, what's going on? We um, can't figure anything out. Um, and we had planned to do another MRI in uh, six months, I think. Um, but I had done some more blood work. I think this was around um, June or July now. Um, and the SED rate was still elevated. Um, I was still having this terrible pain. Um, so this rheumatologist I was seeing said, you know what, let's just do another MRI. Let's, let's just, um, it's early, but let's just check again. Um, and this one came back uh, in the, I guess, the primary differential or, or whatever they saw uh, looked like leukemia. Um, and that obviously got everyone's attention. Um, and that got me a bone marrow biopsy, um, which, if you're not familiar, is not fun. I uh, don't recommend it. Um, but anyway, uh, that also came back normal. Um, so we're all very confused again. Like, why why does the MRI look this way, or this, this last MRI that we had look this way, and the, the bone marrow biopsy looks fine? Um, and they were thinking it was just sampling error, like they went in the wrong spot. Um, so that got me another bone marrow biopsy. Um, this time it was um, CT guided, so they, um, sorry if you're squeamish, but uh, put me into a, a scanner, um, sort of advance the needle into my bone a little bit, and uh, or pull me out, put put the needle in a little bit, and put me back in, see if they got in the right spot, and do it again. And um, yeah, so not fun. Wouldn't recommend. Um, but uh, this one, they did go in the right spot, uh, and it came back positive for Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, now, just quick, um, I guess, medical lesson for anyone who's not familiar. I'm not a doctor, by the way, but um, I know Hodgkin lymphoma um, is a lot less scary than leukemias. Um, it is very treatable. Um, treatment is very good for it. Um, so in sort of a weird sense, it was relieving um, that it wasn't leukemia. And it, it I mean, it's still cancer, but um, uh, I guess a less scary cancer. Um, so anyway, so the, um, that, because it was in my uh, bones, that's by definition stage four, um, because it's outside of the lymphatic system. Um, and I guess a um, sort of practice in oncology is to not um, start treatment until you have primary tissue. Um, so they wanted to get a lymph node that, was, that had uh, cancer in it. Um, so that got me a surgery. Um, they went in my uh, groin and in my neck. Um, I don't know if you can see, maybe, yeah, there's a little scar here. Um, that's where they went. Um, they pulled uh, three lymph nodes out, actually. One one from my groin and, and two from the neck. Um, and these ones, the ones in the neck, the, um, those came back positive for uh, Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, so that was in August. Yeah, August of 2021. Um, so from there, things moved really fast. Um, uh, I got uh, a port put in. Um, so that's just a, like a little device that goes um, under the skin um, that, that helps get the chemo drugs. Um, and um, I started chemo in September. Um, so the standard treatment for uh, Hodgkin lymphoma is what's called ABVD. Um, it stands for the, the four different chemo drugs that you get. That's um, adriamycin, bleomycin, vinblastine, and carbazine. Um, the treatment that I got, though, was a little bit different. Um, there, I guess, in recent years have been some studies about um, uh, specifically in stage four disease and some other indicators that I don't remember, um, but I, I fit, fit the bill sort of for this treatment. Um, you drop the bleomycin from the from ABVD, um, and you add what's called uh, brintuximab vidotin. Um, so the the treatment that I got was called BV for brintuximab, um, AVD. So BV AVD was was my treatment. Um, and it goes for 12 rounds um, or or six cycles. Each, each cycle is two um, infusions, um, and they're spaced uh, two weeks apart. So every Monday or I'm sorry, every other Monday, um, I go into the infusion center, um, get my chemo, and then um, I sort of feel fine. Um, it really 
and then like even Tuesday, I'd, I'd feel fine. Um, and then Wednesday, excuse me, um, Wednesday it would really start to hit me. I'd, I'd maybe even Tuesday night, I'd, I'd get a little bit tired, go to bed early. Um, but then Wednesday, it, I mean, it felt awful, like just truly awful. Um, I'd wake up at like 2 p.m. Um, I think the latest I woke up was like 6 p.m. once. I, just, I slept straight from, you know, normal bedtime on Tuesday to 6 p.m. on Wednesday the next day. Um, and um, it kind of feels like, like the worst hangover imaginable. Just like really, like you've been on a bender and, and the headache isn't so bad though. You really don't have much of a headache, but you, your whole body is just like dead, like really just awful, um, uh, and it lasts, like, four days, it, um, so, like, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, Saturday, I don't know, kind of start to feel a little bit better, um, and that's kind of its own miserable, uh, thing, because the other days, like, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, you know, I'd wake up at, like, two, eat breakfast, <laughs> um, eat something like something small um and then I just go back to sleep and like sleep until dinner time like I don't know 6 or 7 p.m eat like half a dinner like really not much um and then maybe try and do something for a little bit but really just probably go back to sleep like um uh but then Saturday um you kind of do start to feel a little bit better but so like it's harder to sleep because you 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 are kind of a little bit more awake, but you still feel awful. Like you still feel like so miserable that it, it's hard to, um, like focus on anything or like I, I couldn't like sit and read a book even. I like I I wouldn't be like concentrating on on what I'm reading or, or anything like that. Um, so that was really not fun. Um, but I guess the other way to look at it is it's only four days. Um, uh, so it, it sort of starts to clear up, and then, um, after that, it really just kind of feel normal again. Um, so I guess now I should talk about all, all of the drugs that I was on besides the chemo. Um, so most of them are, are anti-emetics, um, or the uh, anti-emetic is, um, like anti-nausea and, uh, anti-vomiting. Um, so in the infusion center, I would, before getting the chemo, I would get, um, uh, let me think, it was a prepotent, um, which tastes terrible. Um, you get this, like, sort of, like, rubbery, metallic taste in your mouth. It's, it's really awful. Um, uh, even, like, when they, it, you know, you're not taking it by mouth, they put it through the, the port, through the IV, um, but it, you get the taste in your mouth anyway. Um, um, so a prepotent, um, uh, what's called aloxy, um, which is similar to... Um, one of the other drugs I was taking, like, by mouth at home. Um, um, and then also uh, dexamethasone, um, which is just a steroid. Um, so those three I would get in the hospital um, before getting the chemo. Um, and then at home I would take um, more dexamethasone on the, the three days following chemo. Um, uh, what is it called? The lanzapine, um, which is actually a, an antipsychotic drug, but, um, has anti-nausea properties, um, I'd also take that on, on the three days following chemo, um, and then I would have, um, Zofran, Compazine, and Ativan, funny enough, um, those three would be just as needed, um, so if I was experiencing any nausea, um, I would start with, um, Compazine, normally you'd start with Zofran, but I started with, um, Compazine, because Zofran is, like, really, really constipating, it was, and it was giving, giving me wicked headaches, um, so, uh, that, we just swapped the Compazine and Zofran, so I'd start with, uh, Compazine, um, so, anyway, so those were the, um, anti-nausea meds, um, I'd also take, like, a bunch of laxatives, because, um, the, I think it's Decarbazine, I could be wrong, one, one of the chemo drugs, um, is really constipating, and then also Zofran is, is very constipating, so, um, those two together, um, uh, yeah, not, not fun there, um, uh, so, antiemetics, uh, laxatives, um, oh, right, um, there's what's called acyclovir and Bactrim, 
Um, those are um, uh, one's an antiviral, the other's a um, antibiotic, um, and those are because you're immunocompromised on um, chemo. Um, it's just to help prevent you from getting, um, I think, like shingles and some other stuff. Um, uh, so those just take constantly. Um, I'm still taking them now because um, I'm still uh, immunocompromised from the chemo. Um, uh, you'd also take on day two or like 24 hours after um, the chemo, you take uh, growth factor, which is a um, like injection that you give yourself. Um, uh, that's just to uh, like boost your white counts, I think, or like tell your bone marrow to make more white cells because um, the chemo kind of wipes them out. Um, I think that's it. Um, antimedics, the laxatives, Bactrim, acyclovir, growth factor. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting one. Maybe not. Anyway, um, so it's a lot of drugs. Uh, it's a lot of a lot to keep track of. Um, oh yeah, the, um, you'd also take um, uh, what's it called? Um, some just like anti-allergy drug for some reason um, helps prevent like bone pains from the the growth factor. Like it when your bones are just cranking out white cells, um, it can be kind of painful, um, so I guess for whatever reason this allergy drug um, helps alleviate some of that pain. I don't know, it's probably a placebo, but you know, that's fine. Um, so anyway, so that's um, that sort of rhythm or whatever of the um, every two weeks get chemo, feel awful for four days, and then, um, you know, kind of good for the, the next 11 till you do it all again. Um, that's just kind of how it went for, um, six months, five months. Um, so I was actually working through, um, or I was at an internship, um, uh, before I was diagnosed and then obviously while I was, or when I was diagnosed and when I started chemo, um, and like that week of the chemo, there, there's no way I could work. The, uh, maybe I could try and get something done on like Tuesday. Um, but really the, the infusion is sort of like all day long or like half of the day. Usually I'd go at like eight or nine in the morning um, and leave by three. Um, so yeah, work, working on that day is probably out of the question. Tuesday, I could try, try and get something done. But then, yeah, when Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm just dead. Um, and um, so then it was really like the second week that I'd, I'd try and get some work done. Um, my boss was fantastic. He was uh, really understanding. Really, even before all of this, when I was like, "Hey, like, I've got this health thing going on. I don't, I don't know what it is. Like, I've got all these doctor's appointments." He was fantastic through the whole thing and, and really understanding and supportive. And um, so, anyway, um, I'd probably work, I don't know, like twenty hours a week or so on the the um, good weeks. Um, I probably could have done more, but it, it really was just kind of like, I, I kind of want to like clean my apartment and kind of like catch up on stuff that I missed in the last week. Um, cause you know, um, not really doing anything, just sleeping. Um, so yeah, so I, I was working on this project that, um, uh, didn't really have any deadline and I could just kind of chip away at it. Um, that was, that was really nice. Um, so that ended in December though. Um, so for the past like two months, um, I've been unemployed and uh, just trying to pass the time. Um, uh, really, I think, um, especially towards the end, what like really got to me was um, just how bored and lonely I would get. Um, I, like on the sort of good week, um, I just you know wake up at my normal time. Um, and just be like, okay, what am I going to do today? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Play some video games. Maybe I'm going to read some uh, book. Uh, maybe play some more video games and then go to sleep. Like, the, uh, yeah, it really, really got old. It was, um, oops, my computer wants to go to sleep. Um, yeah, it really got old. Um, uh, so um, the other kind of, 
uh, sucky thing about this is is there's the risk of COVID. Um, so if you know if I'd gotten this in in a non pandemic time, um, I would have been able to at least go out and um, sort of do some stuff. But um, because of COVID, um, and I'm immunocompromised. I really just kind of stayed in my apartment and I didn't go anywhere. Um, the risk, at least my, my doctor was saying, the risk with COVID is, is really not necessarily COVID itself. Like if I got COVID, it, it probably wouldn't be serious. Like I, I'd do okay. Um, it's that I wouldn't be able to get chemo. And um, that obviously is a problem. So um, uh, I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to delay chemo at all. I wanted to, you know, get through this uh, as quick as possible. And, and, um, and also just you know, do it right, because that, um, you know, don't want, don't want the cancer to come back, so, um, anyway, um, it's February now, um, 2022, um, and I'm done with chemo, um, so what's ahead of me is, um, a scan at the end of March, um, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, this is really important, um, I had a scan, uh, so after two cycles of, um, ABVD or, or, um, BVAVD. Um, so after four infusions, um, you do another scan, um, another PET scan. Um, and that's just to see, you know, what's going on. Um, mine looked great. The, the, all of the little spots that lit up on the first one, um, uh, were completely gone. Um, so I'm, I'm in remission now, which is fantastic. Um, so, uh, the next scan is going to be at the end of March. Um, I think we're, we're all expecting it's going to look just as good as the first one. Um, if it does, then, you know, it's just monitor. Um, uh, I think it's, uh, every six months and, uh, I'll have a, another scan and then every three months, um, is just blood work and a, a physical exam. Um, so, um, that's assuming everything looks good. Um, if not, uh, like if, if it looks like there's cancer somewhere, um, there's a, a different, uh, chemo regimen, um, that is shorter in duration, um, but is just a bit more intense, um, than what I went through. So hopefully we don't have to do that, but, um, there is, um, other treatments available. So, um, again, the, uh, just the, the messaging that I, I got, even from the, the other doctors I was seeing, um, uh, when I was first diagnosed, um, uh, is that Hodgkin lymphoma is very treatable. Um, so obviously still cancer, still awful, um, but, uh, not, not the scariest. Like, I, um, uh, I think I was more scared when we were thinking it was leukemia than I was, um, sort of through all of this or when, when we, um, found out it was, it was Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, so anyway, um. I think that's kind of everything. That's that's sort of the summary of it. I'm at like 20 minutes now or 23 minutes. So um, uh, if I wasn't clear on anything though, or or if anyone has any questions, um, you know, drop them drop them in the comments. I'm happy to share. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who um, reached out to me and and offered support and love and and everything through all of this. Um, it really uh, I can't, I can't put into words how much it means to me. Um, so yeah, thank you.